Good morning, good evening, good whatever time of day it is, and welcome to GCSE Home Learning. This is our first lesson on the urban issues topic. Uh, the lesson is on mega cities, large urban areas of over 10 million people. This lesson does apply to all GCSE specifications. Take a look at the image. This is Tokyo. It is the largest urban area in the world, the largest city in the world, shadowed there in the distance by Mount Fuji, a highly uh, explosive composite volcano um, due to Japan's location on a destructive plate boundary. And in this image, you can see lots of infrastructure such as the government buildings. And there is lots of modern infrastructure here because Tokyo is an urban area in a highly developed country. And by highly developed, I'm meaning a country that has a long life expectancy, a country which has great wealth, GDP, lots of money, and a country where there is great access to education. Countries that are not as developed, we call newly emerging economies. These are countries which are moving towards development, but they also have large urban areas and they have what we call mega cities within them. Beijing is a mega city in China and China has lots of mega cities, in fact, which um, house many millions of workers, particularly in the secondary industry. And we will look at this urban area. The poorest of countries in the world, which we call the low income countries, the developing ones, um, also have urban areas, but they have less urban areas with less people living in them. Um, here is an example of Liberia in Africa and Monrovia is uh, the capital of that country, a country um, which I know very little about. And just today I discovered that Monrovia is the poorest urban area in the world and is nowhere near becoming a mega city. So let's have a look at the focus today. We're looking at what is causing the rapid growth of mega cities. So we need to just confirm what a mega city actually is. And we're looking at what is causing them to grow really quickly. So three things I'd like you to do to begin this lesson. Take your notepad, your exercise book. I would like you to write your lesson title. That is the question there. What is causing the rapid growth of mega cities? I would like you to write your two key words rural urban migration and natural increase. We are using this vocabulary today. And I would like you to complete the do now and stretch questions which are there, which are questions just to test what knowledge you already have about megacity growth. And you may know already some answers to these questions. Take a moment to write those three things down. You may want to pause this video because I will continue in five seconds. OK, let's just check our answers to our retrieval quiz. A mega city has a population of over 10 million people. It is true. So a true mega city has over 10 million people living within it. You may sometimes see London in textbooks as a mega city. Um, officially, it isn't because it has about seven to eight million people. But sometimes it is classed as a mega city because during the daytime, due to lots of commuter workers coming from outside London, coming into London to work, the population does hit around 10 million. But London is not a mega city, although it is a large urban area. Number two, people in developing countries move to cities for work. That is also true. And we will look at that today, particularly in those newly emerging economies, people are moving from countryside to cities for work. So our stretch question is, why might people not want to live in rural areas? And rural areas, that is the countryside. Why would people not want to live in countryside areas? Um, you may have some thoughts on this. Um, answers such as a lack of opportunity in the countryside may be, may be good. Um, things like job opportunities um, or jobs with low salaries such as farming. You can see in the picture there, people are farming. If you are in a developing country or a newly emerging economy, lots of people in the countryside on low incomes on farms, 
may want to leave that rural area and go to the big cities for work, for work in another industry such as manufacturing which may pay more, for other education opportunities at universities that do not exist in the countryside. So there's lots of reasons why people might move. Okay, so we're looking at what is causing the rapid growth of megacities today. Um, regardless of the specification you are using, this does apply to all of them. We're looking for AQA, the emergence of megacities, and we will cover these areas in lesson one and lesson two. This is the OCR specification, and again, in lesson one and lesson two, we will cover these areas. Okay, I would like to first begin by looking at where the mega cities are, so location where they are found. On the right, you can see a map of the world's continents, North America there, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, and so on. On the left, you can see a map detailing where the world's mega cities are, and the blue dots represent the mega cities that are growing the fastest in the world. So it's not all of the mega cities in the world, but it's the ones that are growing the fastest. Now let's just take a look at where they are. So in North America here in red, we have three mega cities. In South America, we have three mega cities. In Europe, in blue, we have no mega cities that are growing very fast. Um, in Africa, on this map, we do not have any mega cities that are in the top 15 for growing fast. There is a very famous mega city in Lagos called Nigeria, but it's not as growing as fast as these other ones on the map. In Asia, in green, then take a look, we have a large number of mega cities there. So our first point is we can see that most of the world's fastest growing megacities mega are found in which continent? Yep, yeah, we're looking at green, we're looking at Asia. So what I'd like you to do is write the subheading location of megacities and underneath that put number one. And we are going to write that they are found um, mainly, apologies for my handwriting, mainly in Asia. That's these ones here. Just two more seconds to do that. Okay, moving on. If we refer back to the types of countries that we have, low income, newly emerging and high income, which show the scale in increasing development, we can actually see a pattern to where most of these mega cities are found. So for example, here in orange, Argentina and Brazil, where Sao Paulo, Buenos Aires and Rio de Janeiro are found, are in a newly emerging economy. They are newly emerging countries. Uh, Mexico City in Mexico is also a newly emerging country, a newly emerging economy. And in India and in China, they are also newly emerging economies. So we can see that most 13 or 12, even 12 of the fastest growing megacities are found in newly emerging economies. Um, there is three here, New York, Los Angeles and Tokyo, which are found in high income countries. So there are some there. It is very unlikely to find megacities growing fast in low income countries, but we'll see why shortly. So underneath your um, title of location of megacities, you have mostly in Asia is where they are found. But we can also add that they are mostly in what type of country? You're absolutely right, NEEs, Newly Emerging Economies. Okay, let's look at the first reason why these cities are growing so fast. And it's to do with something called rural urban migration. So you probably know a rural area is the countryside. Here is a picture of a beautiful rural area in China. And let's imagine the rural areas are in the center of China, just for example. Many people in the rural areas 
do not want to live there, especially young people. They do not want a job in farming. They were looking for opportunities in the city. It's something we'll look at in lesson two called push and pull factors. So lots of these people are moving to the urban area looking for work, looking for opportunities, jobs in factories perhaps, better jobs. And this, because they're moving from a rural area to an urban area, we call it rural urban migration and migration is movement. So this is the first reason. So we've got people moving to cities and I've got Shanghai here on the coast as a city, we've got this movement. And as people move, I'm gonna draw a person. This person here may be living in the rural area of a newly emerging economy, moves to the city, the urban area, because they're looking for work in factories. And these newly emerging economies have lots of factories because there is a large population, because they're a mega city, which means workers are actually able to be paid a low wage. If there's lots of people looking for a job, you can pay them lower wages because somebody will work for you. It allows companies to pay workers a low wage and make lots of profit. So these newly emerging economies have lots of jobs in factories, making goods, manufacturing. It's the secondary industry, for example, making phones, tablets, uh, computer electronics and so forth. So people move from the rural to the urban area looking for this work. And then all of these goods that are made by these factories are shipped to other countries in great big container boxes on container ships. They are exported to other countries. So it makes sense that these mega cities are by the coast and they have developed by the coastline in order that they are, they have factories near to the coastline to export and sell the products to other countries. If we look at the map once more, you can see that they are mostly coastal or indeed nearly all coastal there, these mega cities, because they have lots of manufacturing going on and the goods that are made are then put onto ships, container ships and exported to the rest of the world. So when you buy a phone in the United Kingdom, that phone is very likely to have been manufactured in China and shipped all the way from a mega city on the coast of China to the UK and the shop or wherever you got your phone from. So let's just have a quick check of our understanding for this you can read the answers aloud. We don't need to write them down. Once you've done it, you can pause and copy the question and answers down after, but it's more important that you just have a go at answering. Try speaking out loud. Don't worry if there's someone in the room, if they hear you speak in, they'll ask you what you're learning about later. Okay, question one, what is a mega city? A city with a population of over 10 million people. Hopefully that's the answer you were thinking. You can write down the answer to that later. Question two, in what type of country are mega cities growing the fastest? So think you have low income countries, newly emerging economies and high income countries. Which type of country are the mega cities growing the fastest? Newly emerging economies. Question three, what type of employment attracts people to work in many mega cities? So what are they looking for when they leave the rural countryside area and move to the urban city area? It's likely that they are attracted to what kind of job? And the answer would be possibly manufacturing, the secondary industry, making goods. Question four, why have most mega cities developed along coastlines? Well, they've developed there because that is where goods can be exported easily by ship away. So the factories have put themselves by the coastline to sell the goods. And because the factories are by the coastline, many people move to those um, areas, those cities with the factories by the coastline coming from the rural area and the population grows and grows there. And lastly, what is the name of the movement of people from countryside to cities? So that process of movement 
very pleased if you get this right. That is your rural urban migration. You may want to pause this video and copy down those definitions and answers to those questions. And then we have one more thing before we consolidate this lesson. So there is a second reason why megacities are growing. It's not only because people coming in from the rural areas. The second reason is cities which have a large population have a large number of women who could become mothers. And lots of young people moving from the countryside looking for jobs, they want to leave the countryside, they move to the city looking for work, are young and healthy and are very likely to reproduce, have children. And what happens in a city is if there are lots more births than the number of people dying in that city, then the population would of course grow. So if more babies are born than the number of people that are dying, the number of people living in the city, the population, would grow. And we call this natural increase because the population goes up and it's a natural process having children. So that is our second reason why these cities are growing so fast. Our first reason we saw was the rural urban migration. And you can see at this data I've got from China here that look at 2010, in the countryside, half of the people in China lived in the countryside. But by 2050, that is going to reduce because they're moving to the cities. And you can see there that the urban in blue in 2020, 50%, half the people in China lived in cities. But that will go to 77% because more and more people are living in cities. It's a process called urbanization. We'll look at that word again in lesson two. Okay, so a bit of a challenge for you. Let's complete an answer to understand the question we're asking, to show our understanding of the question. And that question is why megacities are growing rapidly. That is our question of the day. And actually, the key words here are the two reasons why. So to begin this answer, I want you to write with me. We're going to name the two reasons for growth. So two reasons megacities grow are We've got rural urban migration, rural urban migration. My spelling is there in the keywords. And my other one is natural increase. Now, naming those two processes, I may possibly get two out of my four marks. But what I do now need to do is explain why each of these is happening. So I'd now like you to complete your answer by yourself explaining why is rural urban migration happening in these newly emerging economies? And what is natural increase? Why does that happen? What is causing the population to grow by natural increase? Um, do feel free to write your answers in the comments below this um, YouTube channel. Um, as people do write them, I will reply, give you a comment and then delete them so that other people can write theirs without necessarily copying what someone else has written. That has proved well on other lessons, but you're more than welcome to write your, your answer in the comment below and I will um, reply to that. Um, just for future lessons, if you're interested in learning more about urban issues and other topics in GCSE geography, do um, follow the Twitter or the Instagram and please, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can see when new lessons are uploaded. And it makes me feel good knowing that people are engaged with these because it takes a lot of my time, but I'm hoping it is really useful for you. Thank you very much, guys.